Okay, so uh, let me first uh, wish you a, a very well, warm welcome uh, to our session uh, this morning, and thank you for uh, taking the time out and for calling in from all of those places you're uh, you're calling in from. I think uh, Mariko wins the prize for uh, the person who's furthest away, uh, calling in from Hong Kong, but from everybody else in Northampton and Bristol and Shropshire and Suffolk and various places, uh, thank you for uh, thank you for being here. Uh, so my name is Alan Cummings. Uh, I'm the uh, admissions tutor. Uh, for the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures. Uh, so I get to look at all of the uh, undergraduate uh, applications. I get to read the personal statements and, uh, and so on. So um, what we're gonna to do today is, so I'm gonna talk you through um, the program, um, how it works, uh, what sort of classes you'll be taking, um, you know, what the, what the whole thing uh, what the whole thing looks like, um, and then um, in the latter half uh, we will have uh, some time for questions uh, and answers. Uh, I'd say like um, just in the you know if you have a question that comes to mind uh, while I'm talking, uh, you can just put things into chat. So type your questions uh, into chat, and then I will at the end in the Q and A section uh, I will go back uh, through those uh, and I will try to answer uh, the questions. Um, we also have um, Penny uh, with us today. So Penny uh, studied uh, Japanese uh, at SOAS uh, as an undergraduate student, and she's now doing an MA uh, with us. Um, so if you have kind of questions which are better answered by somebody who's actually been on the program rather than, than me, who's one of the teachers on the program, uh, then uh, you can also you know, put in some questions there for, for Penny and we can, we, we can both try to uh, answer those towards the towards the end. Um, so that's what we'll do in the last uh, half hour or so. But until then, I will I will kind of talk you through uh, how the how the whole thing um, works. Um, okay. So I guess you know one question you always have about universities is you know why should you go to a, a particular place? Uh, so we have some kind of really brief points about why SOAS would be a great place uh, for you to come. Um, first one, of course, is, you know, it's sort of in our name, uh, SOAS, the School of Oriental and African Studies. Um, you know, we are the, the UK specialists in the study of Asia, Africa, uh, and the Middle East. Um, so if that's, you know, subjects that you're interested in or places that you're, you're interested in, uh, we're really the best place that you can come to, to study that stuff. So we have uh, over 300 uh, academics who specialize in those, in the languages and the cultures uh, of those particular regions. Uh, we have an amazing library, and I guess maybe the library isn't the first thing you uh, you might think about when you're thinking about which university you want to go to. Um, but as you start getting uh, deeper you know, into your uh, degree, you'll find that the SOAS library is really an amazing uh, resource. We are like a national research library because we have uh, so many resources which are about you know, the regions that we, uh, that we study. So you know, if you're East Asia, you can go up to the uh, the third floor, the D floor in, in the library, uh, and you will find thousands and thousands of books uh, in English uh, and in you know, Chinese, Korean, and Japanese uh, about, uh, about East Asia. So it's, it's a really amazing uh, resource, you know, as you come towards the end of the degree and you're studying, uh, you know, working on your dissertation, uh, for example, you'll, you'll find that it's really um, invaluable. Um, students always enjoy uh, our teaching. We've got one of the highest uh, satisfaction ratings uh, of universities uh, in London. Um, we have a, a really nice uh, staff uh, studio ratio, not ration, I need to correct my PowerPoint, obviously. Um, so we have, uh, you know, we have small group teaching, particularly uh, on, our, you know, on our language uh, modules. Uh, and the other thing I'd say about SOAS is that it's, it's a really diverse uh, and it's a really kind of international uh, place. You know, we have around 6,000 students um, and there are, um, you know, last time I looked, about 160 nationalities being represented uh, at SOAS. Um, the percentage of our student body who are from outside the UK uh, is one of the it's one of the largest um, in the in the UK. So, yeah, you know, when you come to SOAS, you're you're learning about the world, but in a sense, you're also meeting uh, the world. So, you know, you'll you'll get to meet people from uh, all sorts of all sorts of places when you when you come to SOAS. Um, to kind of move on to give you a little bit of information uh, about. Uh, the department, so uh, the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures, which is where uh, you know we, we teach Chinese, Korean, and uh, and Japanese. Um, so we have several different undergraduate uh, degrees uh, about Japan, Korea, and China. Uh, we also have uh, a kind of a broader uh, East Asia 
studies uh, degree, and I'll, I'll kind of talk in a bit more detail about those, those degrees uh, in, in a little bit. Um, we have within the department, there is a, a dedicated team of, uh, of academics uh, who specialize in all sorts of different things. So we have specialists in language pedagogy, sociolinguistics, uh, literature, modern literature, um, theater, that would be me actually, um, history, um, film, media, kind of classical language. Um, and um, so we also have, of course, a dedicated team of, uh, of language teachers. Um, our, uh, our language teachers are all native speakers. Uh, so our Chinese teachers and our Korean teachers and our Japanese teachers, they're all, they're all nationals. They all grew up speaking uh, those languages uh, and they're, they're kind of lovely. They'll, 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 they'll push you. Uh, they'll, need, they'll be strict when they need to be strict, but they're, you know, they're, they're really warm and friendly and they will help you get to where you want to get with, uh, with the languages. Um, if you're interested in you know, researching East Asia, uh, SOAS also has some of these, uh, these things I've listed below. So there's a, a body called the Japan Research Center. Um, and these, and there's also the SOAS China Institute and the Center of Korean Studies. And these are like their little umbrella research groups. So they bring together uh, everybody at SOAS who works on those particular areas. So, you know, if you're interested uh, in Japan, uh, for example, of course, we have you know, people in the East Asia department who, who focus on Japan, but we also have people in the economics department and the uh, social anthropology department, um, in religions, in art history. So there's lots of people throughout SOAS who work uh, on Japan, but the Japan Research Center brings all of those people together. And during the terms, uh, you know, all of these research institutes will have uh, weekly seminars where you, you can get to hear uh, you know, our long lectures on specific topics by uh, sometimes you know, people who research those topics at SOAS, but very often uh, visiting scholars. You know, somebody's coming um, through the UK, somebody's coming through London uh, from the States or from Europe or from Japan. We, you know, we grab them, and we bring them in and they, you know, they get to talk about the things they're researching at the moment. So if you're kind of interested in finding out you know, what the leading edge uh, in research uh, on East Asia is, um, there are always lots of kind of great talks going on every week during term time that you can that you can attend. Um, so, uh, in terms of our, our teaching um, in the uh, in the department, um, what our degrees basically aim to do is is two things. So, we aim to teach you uh, the language, uh, but we also aim to teach you uh, about the culture. So, teaching you about society, uh, the history, the literary culture, the film culture, TV popular culture, um, all of that stuff. So we, we, we aim to give you uh, a broader understanding of East Asia in general, but also you know, the specific cultures of China uh, or of Korea or of, um, or of Japan. Um, we have, um, some of our degrees have intensive uh, language teachers. Um, on those degrees, we, we really aim to take you by the end of the degree uh, you know, you can start at a number of different levels. I can talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but we aim to take you, you know, by the end of the degree um, to a level where you can, you know, you can read newspapers um, and you can, you know, you can begin to read uh, novels. Uh, you'll be able to kind of write reports in the language. You'll be able to make uh, presentations on, uh, on all kinds of topics. Um, we have lots of, uh, lots of small group teaching. Um, so the way that, you know, the language teaching uh, works, um, you know, some classes, you know, some parts of a, of a language module will be, uh, there'll be a lecture, for example, a grammar lecture, and those may have everybody on the module attending just that lecture. Uh, but then you'll also be divided up into smaller groups for, uh, you know, writing practice and reading practice, uh, and for also listening and, and speaking. Um, um, our lecture courses as well, you know, we have kind of big lectures that everybody will be in, if you have that kind of image of university teaching, uh, but those are always accompanied by uh, smaller seminar groups where you get to talk about issues that arose in the lecture or issues that arise out of uh, a reading that we get you to do um, in, uh, in smaller groups. So that's, that's, the, that's the way the, uh, the teaching uh, itself works. Um, to move on to the, uh, to the degrees uh, then, um, we have um, probably the easiest way to kind of think about the degrees is that we have uh, four-year degrees um, and the four-year degrees, be a Chinese, be a Japanese, be a Korean, um, all of those degrees uh, are four years because they have one year uh, that you spend studying uh, at a university 
uh, in Japan, in Korea, or in China or Taiwan. Um, we also have uh, a three-year degree, um, and the three-year degree, there is no year abroad um, with that one, um, and the three-year degree is, is called BA East Asian Studies, so you can see from the title, uh, it's a bit broader uh, than the others. You can, you can choose to study, um, for example, just one language throughout that, or you could choose to study a different language uh, every year. If you want to do a little bit of Korean, a little bit of Chinese, a little bit of Japanese, you can do that, and you also get modules which are, which are kind of a bit broader on that degree um, as well. Um, but both of those types of degrees, so both the four-year degrees and the three-year degree, um, they can be combined as a, as a joint honours degree with uh, other subjects that SOAS offers. Um, there's a list there, development studies, economics, history, history of art, international relations, uh, law, linguistics, music, politics, social anthropology, uh, and, uh, and world philosophies. Um, so yeah, you can, you can choose to either do these degrees as a single subject degree, or you can do them as a, a joint, like a, a combined, uh, a combined um, degree. Um, so those, those are the degrees that we, that we offer. Um, the year abroad on the, on the four-year degrees is, is always a, an amazing um, experience. Uh, as I say, you get to spend um, one year um, living and studying uh, in, uh, in, the, in the country. Um, we send you to uh, a university there and you'll be taking of course, classes, you'll take language classes, but you also have some uh, other classes which can kind of vary a little bit from, from university to uh, university. Um, but you also have, of course, you know, the, the experience of you know, living, surviving you know, 24 hours a day uh, in the culture and using the language all the time. So that's really the, you know, the, the, the major benefit. Uh, you're there, you've got to be able to, to use the language, you'll be exposed uh, you know, to vocabulary, and ways of saying things that you haven't come across. Uh, you'll be engaging with people, you'll be making friends, um, all of that kind of experience. Uh, and, you know, I always say at these, uh, at these kind of recruitment events, you know, for us who, who work in the department at SOAS, um, it always feels a little bit like, you know, in your first couple of years when you're with us, uh, okay, you know, you're, you're 18, you're 19, um, if you're coming from school. Uh, so yeah, I guess legally you're already an adult, but you know, you're just kind of making your first steps out into the world. Uh, you're kind of figuring things out, you know, how do you do your own laundry? How do you cook for yourself? How do you, you know, how do you make, how do you make new friends? Uh, all of that sort of stuff is, is beginning to happen. But when students go away on the year abroad, it always feels like you kind of, you go away, not quite as a child, but you're not quite an adult yet. But when you come back, it feels like you've, you've definitely, Mature. So those experiences that you have on the on the year abroad, and there's all sorts of experiences you can have on those year abroad. Uh, you know, you can uh, you can travel. You know, universities, of course, have have holidays. Um, so people travel uh, within the countries that they're studying in, or sometimes you know, Japan and Korea and China. Um, they're very very close to each other. You, know, you can you can fly to China from Korea very easily. You can you can hop on a ferry from uh, Japan to Korea. Um, so you can explore kind of broader East Asia while you're uh, while you're you're there as well. Uh, you can get to visit uh, the sites, um, Seoul, Shanghai, uh, Great Wall of China. But of course, you also get the experience of of living there, uh, of uh, of making friends. Um, relationships, all of that, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, it, it, it really, uh, it improves your language, it improves your understanding, but it also um, allows you to, to grow uh, as, a, as, a, as a human being. Um, okay, so I'll also say something then about the, uh, about the program uh, structure and the kind of things you, you study uh, on each of our uh, degrees. Um, first of all, I'll talk about the, about the four-year single subject degrees. So uh, BA Chinese, uh, BA Japanese, and BA Korean, um, and the structure for these degrees is is really quite uh, is really quite similar. Um, so I can kind of I can talk about them um, in parallel here. Um, so in first year, if you come in and you're on that degree, um, you will have uh, a language module. I should say as well, like you can see the credits here. So each year at SOS, you do 120 credits. Um, in first year. You don't have any choice, so we just tell you what it is you're you're going to be doing. Um, but if you're coming in as a beginner, then your language module will be the 60 credit 
um, J100, CH100, or K100. Um, and that is, uh, it's an 8R um, language module. Um, and, you know, the idea of that is to kind of, it's to give you that foundation um, in, um, in all of the key skills in language learning, which are reading, writing, speaking, listening, and, uh, and translation. Um, so that's eight hours a week, and it's, you know, it's divided up. So you have, you know, grammar lectures, but you also have uh, smaller groups where you're working on reading and writing, or you're working on speaking uh, and listening, uh, for example. So that's, that's an intensive, you know, eight hours a week is, is quite a lot. Um, what I always say to students at these events is, you know, we always say, you know, it's so us that for, you know, the languages we teach you um, are, are difficult. You know, they're, they're, they're not like European languages where um, there are lots of kind of broad similarities. Um, so particularly at the, at the beginning, you know, we say, you know, probably for every one hour that you are in a language classroom, you will probably need to do two hours or perhaps three hours um, at home by yourself. So if you're kind of thinking, okay, or in the library, you know, eight hours a week then equates to, you know, if you're doing an additional two hours, that's 16 hours, so that's 24 hours, or it's 32 hours. Um, so that's, that's the, the language module. Um, one question that always comes up is, you know, if you're coming in with a higher level of language, um, then, yeah, we can, we can accept you with a higher level of, of language. We can give you a placement test, uh, and we can begin you on a higher level language module from uh, year one. Uh, those higher level language modules, though, tend to be 30 credits rather than 60 credits, so you will take something additional uh, along, uh, alongside that. Um, so that language module is intensive. It's there to kind of you know, help you build that foundation uh, in the first year. Um, alongside that, then, um, there are three other things that we, we ask you to take. So there's an academic skills module. Uh, called Reading and Writing East Asian Studies. Um, and that one, it's there to kind of to, to give you, uh, to teach you about the kind of academic skills that you need to do well at university. So, you know, you're doing A-levels at the moment, um, or you're doing IBs maybe. Um, and on those, you know, kind of things at school, you will have learned about writing, writing essays. Um, but university level essays are, are slightly different the way we need them presented. Um, so we tell you about how to use the library we tell you about how to reference, um, you know, how, do you do, how do you do a bibliography, how do you cite your sources uh, properly. We also talk about what is evidence for an academic essay, um, what does an argument look like, what's a good conclusion. Um, all of those kind of really fundamental skills is what we, is what we deal with in that module. Um, then we have a, a module called East Asian Civilizations. Uh, I teach on, on that module, it's usually a, a team taught module, so we'll have somebody covering China, somebody covering Korea, somebody, me, covering Japan. Um, and that module, it's, it's really to kind of, you know, a lot of you will come to SOAS because you're interested, I'm guessing, in popular culture. You know, you've, uh, you're into K-pop uh, or you're into anime uh, or you're into something in China maybe as well. Um, but, you know, you, that module, it's there to kind of, it's there to kind of to give you a sense of that kind of broader history of East Asia, um, both in you know, the specific countries, but also like the broader things which are shared across that, uh, that region of the world. Uh, so there are several things that are shared. You can think about the writing system, you know, Chinese characters, for example. You can maybe think about religions like Buddhism, or you can think about um, like political philosophies like, like Confucianism. Um, so we, we aim to kind of teach you about that kind of that broader history. So we go way back into prehistory and we kind of work up until probably about the 18th, kind of 19th century is about as far as we go in that module. So we're giving you that kind of broad sweep of several thousand years worth of East Asian history to supplement the knowledge you already have about contemporary Korea or contemporary Japan or contemporary China. Um, that's a 30 credit module, so it runs across two terms. Uh, 15 credit modules are normally just one term. Um, and then we have a, a like a popular culture module. Um, we have a uh, and this, so you you kind of you'll, you'll choose the one that, that fits the, the language you're studying. So we have cool Japan, we have K culture, so like Korea obviously, uh, and then we have uh, China in ten words. Um, I should also say, if you go onto the SAS website, you can find lots more information about this structure and about the individual modules uh, that you take. Um, in second year, then um, again, you can see it's a fairly similar um, 
structure. Um, so we have, except you get a little bit more choice uh, in the second year. Uh, so you have your language module, uh, which follows on. It's an intermediate language module. So you begin to move away from kind of talking about, you know, those kind of basic things you do in year one, which are kind of, um, you know, talking about your weekend, um, asking directions, you know, those kind of really kind of basic fundamental things. As you move into the second year, you begin to talk about more kind of abstract uh, things. Uh, you begin to acquire more vocabulary around, around those kind of areas. Um, that uh, then alongside that we have uh, the society module, so a module on contemporary Japanese, Korean or Chinese uh, society. Um, that's a module that's there to prepare you for the year abroad, which is in the third year on all of our degrees. Um, so it's there to kind of teach you what's going on politically, what's going on socially, what are gender relations like, uh, all of those kind of big topics. So kind of to give you an understanding of the contemporary society of the, of the place you'll be living um, in the following year. Um, we have a history module. Um, this, is a, this is a new module. Uh, which we started last year, a uh, module called East Asian Imperialisms. Uh, and of course, imperialism and colonialism, these are kind of you know, big topics. Uh, at the moment, the world begins to kind of uh, think about and address those questions of what, you know, those, those, you know, the, the, those empires uh, and that kind of system of colonialism, uh, you know, through the 18th and 19th century into the 20th century, what that stuff meant uh, for the world. But on that module, we, we you know, we try to think about imperialism in East Asian terms. We very often think that uh, imperialism is something that, uh, that Europe or the United States did to the rest of the world. Um, but in this module, we, we think about imperialism in the Asian context. So what sort of relationships, imperial relationships did China have with its neighbors? What sort of relationships, of course, did Japan have with its neighbors, particularly in the, uh, in the 20th century? Um, so kind of thinking about those, um, you know, those kind of discourses and those ideas uh, that are very much feeding into the relationships between uh, those countries in East Asia uh, today still. Um, we also have a classical language module. Um, so there's introduction to pre-modern Japanese, there's introduction to Hanja, uh, and there's classical and literary um, Chinese. Um, that's aiming to kind of give you a sense of the, of the language before modernity. Um, so kind of taking you back into the past, allowing you to begin to read um, texts which are, you know, which are before the 20th century. Um, so giving you a little bit of an introduction to that, uh, you know, that much wider range of, uh, of history in the language uh, can be a little bit, um, can be a little bit different. Um, then we have uh, a guided option. So you'll choose um, just 15 credits from uh, a list we have. So there's modules on East Asian cinema, uh, there's a module on gender and East Asian literature, uh, there's one called Myths, Legends and Folkways in East Asia, and then we have a, a fieldwork uh, module, uh, and you'll just choose one of those. And then we have uh, an open option module, um, 30 credits, um, and here you can choose a number of different things. You can again choose from that list that I just gave you, um, or you could choose to do a second language. Uh, you know, if you wanted to do some, you're studying Japanese, but you want to learn some Korean, uh, or you're doing Korean, you want to learn some Chinese, uh, you could begin to study that second language there uh, in the second year. Um, there's also what are called central options, which are modules from other departments at SOAS. You know, if you want to get a little bit of an introduction into international relations, you can take like a, an intro module uh, to that uh, in that uh, in that slot in year two. Um, Year three um, is, the, uh, is the year abroad. I've already covered uh, that. You live and you study uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the country. Um, when you come back in the final year, uh, the structure, again, you've got some, some choices. You've got some comp comp compulsory things, but you also have some, uh, you also have some choices. Um, so we have, uh, there's an independent study project, which is a dissertation. Uh, so that's a 30 credit module where you work on some topic that you're interested in uh, yourself and you'll be assigned a supervisor and you'll work with that supervisor. We also give you some training uh, in that in term one. Um, then there's a, a, an advanced language module, J400, K400, CH400. Um, again, doing kind of more complex uh, things with language. We begin to talk about language in the final year as language use rather than language acquisition. 
Um, so you're using your language skills to you know, make presentations or do research or write a report on some contemporary issue. Maybe you want to write about global warming. Maybe you want to write about populism. Maybe you want to write about um, you know, relationships between states in East Asia. Uh, and we, we begin to give you the tools uh, so that you can, you can do that, that kind of work. So the kind of skills that you could use in, in work as well, you know, making presentations and, and writing reports. Uh, in the language that you've been studying. Um, we have a translation module uh, there as well for each of the languages um, where you're kind of translating from uh, Chinese, Korean or Japanese uh, into English. Um, we have a compulsory history module that's called History and Memory in East Asia, which is again kind of looking at the, uh, looking at, at particularly at the 20th century history, um, Second World War, Pacific War, Korean War, um, looking at those at those those elements of history and how they have been remembered um, in the, in in each of the countries in slightly different ways, um, you know sometimes you know, re really different ways, um, and that's also kind of looking at how those events are represented uh, in media, um, so in film and TV shows, um, but also kind of looking at memorialization, um, you know sites for memory uh, and those, those those kinds of things. Um, then again, we have um, we have some guided option modules that you can you can choose from um, advanced language against so classical stuff, cinema, literature. There's a there's a list of those uh, on the on the website, though they they change a little bit from uh, from year to year. And then again, you have the open option where you can choose to do again a second language if you want to continue doing a second language at a higher level. You can you can do that, or again you can choose additional East Asia uh, modules. Um, I'll just I'll skip quite briefly through this. So if you if you want to do a joint degree, the structure is slightly different, um, and the way it normally works is that you take sixty credits on each side of your degree. So sixty credits if you're doing you know, Korean, and then you're doing politics, for example. Sixty credits would be in Korean, and then the other sixty credits would be uh, on the politics side. Um, and so in first year with us, if you're coming in as a beginner, then you would just take the language module, um, and then the Korean, you know, the politics side, they would have also have a couple of compulsory modules that you would need to take. Um, you can find all of those on the, on the website. Um, second year, um, you take the language module, you take the history module, the East Asian imperialisms one, and you take the contemporary society module, and then again, 60 credits on the, from your second subject. Um, third year, you're abroad as before. Um, there, all of the credits you study in the year abroad, they will be on the language side of your uh, degree. So if you're studying politics, you wouldn't you wouldn't be studying any politics modules uh, while you're while you're away, obviously. Um, then in the uh, in the final year, uh, again the advanced language module, the history and memory in East Asia module, and then you have the guided option module choices where you can choose again to do a second language there if you want to do that, um, or you can choose some of the other advanced. Uh, modules that we have available. Um, East Asian studies, if some of you are interested in, in that degree, um, again, I'll, I'll skip through this one, uh, this one fairly quickly. So you have a language module. Um, actually, in the first year of BA East Asian studies, you have a choice. You can choose to do either a 30 credit language module or a 60 credit language module. Uh, we let you do that you know, if you come in on that degree and you're not sure if maybe you want to transfer to be a Korean at the end of the first year, um, then you know if you choose the sixty credit language module, then you will have done the same amount. You'll have done the same language module as those who are on BA Korean, uh, because the normal thirty credit language module that you do is much less uh, intensive. Um, so um, you know, you would have three hours a week as opposed to eight hours a week. So if you if you think you want to do a more intensive language module from year one, then yeah, you can you can choose that sixty credit language uh, option just in year one uh, on that degree. Um, alongside that, you have uh, you have the uh, the reading and writing, the academic skills module. You have the East Asian civilizations, the history module. Um, then you have guided options where you choose either 15 or 45 credits from the, the popular culture modules, and that's going to depend on whether you're taking the 60 credit language module or the 30 credit language module. Um, in year two, again, similar kind of pattern, language module, East Asian imperialisms, uh, miscellaneous and folkways of East Asia, we ask you to take that one. Uh, you take the contemporary society modules, 
Uh, and then you have also an open option module uh, choice there where there's a, a list of different things you can choose. Uh, third year, uh, the dissertation, language module, history module, and again, some, some guided and open option um, modules there. Um, you can also, of course, choose BA East Asian Studies as a joint degree. Um, in that case, the, the pattern looks something like this. Again, the first year, you can choose either 30 or 60 credits of language. If you choose the 30, then you will also do East Asian Civilizations. Uh, second year, again, uh, language modules, one contemporary society module, and the uh, East Asian imperialisms. Final year, uh, history and memory of East Asian cultures, um, language module, and uh, you also have an option there that you can choose uh, as well. So that's that's how that um, that's that's how the degrees uh, work. Um, people often ask, where do our students go to work after they they graduate? Um, and there isn't really a, an easy answer to that because people go on to do all sorts of different things. Uh, you know, some students, you know, they want to go and work uh, in Korea or China, um, and you know, some students even come back from their year abroad with um, with job offers. Um, you know, if you're at a university in China or Japan or Korea, you can go and visit their careers office. You can get to meet companies. You can join job fairs, and you can you can kind of you can join that kind of uh, round of uh, you know university interviews, which are which are happening. Uh, if you want to, you know, if that's something you, you want to pursue. Other people come back here and they decide, you know, I want to still be involved with East Asia, but I want to work in a company in Europe uh, or, in the, or in the UK. Um, these are some of the kind of destinations some of our students have gone on to uh, recently, Foreign Commonwealth Office, uh, NBC TV, obviously in the US, uh, NHK, Japanese TV, uh, Deloitte, uh, Bloomberg, uh, MUFJ, which is a financial institution, uh, there's a whole range of things that uh, that people uh, can go on uh, to do. I should also say something briefly about the entry requirements. Um, we really have, um, you know, there's there's a, a couple of different things that we that are that we look at when we look at your applications. Um, one of them is definitely, you know, the the uh, the grades you're getting. So we look at your GCSE results, but in particular, your, your offer will be based upon. Uh, your A-level uh, results, are you doing A-level or uh, IB? Uh, so in terms of A-levels, it's kind of ABB or BBB level that we're, that we're looking at or something equivalent to that. Um, we say on the website that we, we prefer you to have done a foreign language at GCSE or A-level. Uh, if you haven't, and you know, we're very aware that lots of schools don't offer foreign languages at, um, at those levels anymore. Um, so you know, if you've studied a language in other contexts, you know, if it's not been at school, but you've taken evening classes or you've taken a summer course or you've done an online course or you've been studying by yourself, then tell us about that um, in, in your personal state, because we just want to know that you have an idea of what studying a language involves, um, because it's not, you know, it's, it's quite a, um, you have to put effort uh, into learning a language. Uh, it's not like you can just sit in a classroom and somehow magically you will come out being able to speak Chinese. Um, you really have to, you have to work hard at it. And there are certain disciplines around language learning that if you've done a GCSE or A-level, you already know. But if you've studied by yourself, you will also realize that as well. So tell us about your language study experience. If you haven't studied at GCSE or A-level, uh, it doesn't matter. We're not going to disqualify you because of that. But you know, tell us about uh, about your language study experience. Um, we don't require you to have. You, know, you can come to, to so us as an ab initio learner, as a complete beginner, um, or you can also come in with a slightly higher level. You know, if you've been studying at A level uh, or you've done you know, some self study by yourself, um, we can we can also take you. We can begin you at a higher level language module from uh, year one. Um, Generally, we, we get a lot of applications, so we don't uh, we don't interview very many people. Uh, it'll, but it will be maybe mature students or people with non-standard qualifications or heritage speakers. Uh, sometimes we may interview you in those cases, but in most cases now, uh, we're able to make a decision based upon the content of your application. Um, when I look at applications, really the most important thing for me is the is the personal statement, um, and there I really like to see. Um, you know, tell us something about your, your language study experience, but also tell us something about your, your, your passion, your enthusiasm for wanting to study our languages and these cultures in an academic setting. So if you've read something, uh, if you read a book, a couple of books, then tell us about those. 
if you've got some other experiences or other thoughts, maybe you've got some ideas about what's going on politically in East Asia at the moment, or there's some, something that's kind of fascinated you about fan culture or whatever it is, then you know, tell us a little bit about, about that. So kind of you know, you know, bring your enthusiasm together with your academic interest uh, in, the, uh, in the area. Um, if you do have kind of questions about the qualifications you need, you can either contact me, that's my email address there, AC50, uh, or you can contact the SOAS admissions office um, as well. Uh, okay, so let me just kind of go back and kind of run through some of those questions that people have been, uh, have been putting uh, in. Um, so Ella, you have asked, uh, are East Asian civilizations and imperialism modules, are those general modules? or are they specialized for a certain country based on the degree you choose? Uh, no, so th those are modules that, uh, so it's, it's one module, so everybody who, you know, whether you're studying China or Korea or Japan, you will be on that module. And the way the modules work, for example, in East Asian civilizations, we have some lectures which are you know, broad, so they'll be about, um, I don't know, like uh, Buddhism in East Asia, uh, but then we also have kind of specific ones, specific lectures and uh, seminars which are about your Buddhism in Korea or Buddhism in Japan. Um, so we have kind of big themes, but then we also have kind of specialist stuff as well. Um, and East Asian imperialism works in a similar way uh, as well. So you'll have kind of bigger ones, but they also have uh, lectures and seminars that are more specifically about what's going on in Korea uh, in a specific period or what's going on in Japan in a specific, specific period uh, as well. Um, Nico, you have asked about uh, scholarships for international um, students. Uh, the SOAS website does have some uh, information uh, on scholarships uh, there. So there are, you know, there are some things that I think Indian students um, can um, apply for um, or students from, uh, from overseas. Um, but there isn't anything that the department itself offers. Actually, I'll, I'll put a link in chat here if you're interested in that, but there's a, a big list of the, of, of the scholarships, some of which are available just to undergraduate students and some of which are for you know, masters or PhDs, but there's a big list of them all here at this, uh, at this link. Uh, so you can, you can take a look at those. Um, Samuel, you have asked about uh, JLPT. Um, yeah, I mean, when I look at when I look at people's applications, um, you know, I like to see that kind of enthusiasm and interest being demonstrated. Uh, and you know, if you sat JLPT or Topic or one of those, you know, one of those kinds of um, internationally recognised kind of language um, tests, um, then certainly you can tell us about that because that's really good evidence that you are seriously interested in studying, you know, Chinese or Japanese or uh, or, or, or or Korean. Um, and, you know, depending on the level, of course, we can also then begin you at a slightly higher level from year one in your, in your language uh, module. Um, Alicia, you have asked about um, whether it's useful to kind of to, to learn uh, hiragana, uh, hiragana or katakana or hangul for Korean. Um, I'd say, yeah, um, you know, coming in um, already having, you know, the writing system or some of the writing system um, in your mind uh, actually would give you a really good uh, start. Um, so yeah, if you can study a little bit of that before you can come, um, that would be that would be really uh, that would be really useful. Um, Penny, do you maybe do you maybe want to say something uh, about that? Did you come in uh, knowing any any Japanese uh, or experience of other people in in your in your group? At the time? Um so i had no contact with japanese really apart from just doing it in my free time on memorize mm. it helps kind of if you have done like a gcse in it because a few of my friends had done that and basically all that does is puts you in advanced japanese so you don't have to sit through all the boring stuff again and then in the second year we're all mixed together anyway so it doesn't really have much bearing on it but it does help Excellent, thank you. Um, I guess this is Alicia again. So are there any particular qualities that you're looking for um, in, uh, in, in students? Um, I would say, you know, like when I, when I come to look at those, at those applications, um, it really is, you know, the, the question of, you know, there's a couple of things we, we wanna know. So we wanna know, is it, is it possible 
you know, do you have some kind of background in language learning? Are you able to handle the demands of the of the language side of the course? Um, and that, you know, really the best way to demonstrate that is through some sort of prior experience of studying a language. It doesn't have to be the language you want to study. If you studied French or German or Spanish or whatever, then tell us about that. If you've grown up speaking two languages, tell us about that. Um, you know, if you've taken summer courses in something or you've been self-studying Korean, tell us about your experience uh, of that. Um, so that kind of the language side is one is one side. The other side is, I'd say, you know, can you handle the academic demands of the of the non-language modules? Uh, and for that, it's really, you know, I want to know if, whether you're academically interested in studying the country. Um, so there it's, you know, it's going to be exam qualifications or, or predicted results, uh, but also you can put something in your personal statement to demonstrate your, um, your interest in that. Um, and then I'd say enthusiasm or kind of passion, like you're like, I want to see that you're really interested in studying Korea or you're really interested in studying China. Um, and the reason why I, I, I say that is, you know, with, with one of these particularly the four year language degrees, uh, the languages we teach at SOAS are, you know, they're not European language, they're not European languages, um, so they're difficult, um, you know, particularly if you're learning uh, Chinese or, or Japanese, uh, the writing system, you know, Chinese characters, th there are no shortcuts to learning Chinese characters, it's just going to take you consistent study over, over many years um, and you've got to do it every day because basically you've got to rewire your brain um, to learn something which is, which is quite difficult to learn. Um, and you know, the education systems in China and Japan, they also spend a lot of time teaching um, students characters. So it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's a long process and it's a process that you have to engage in really every day and particularly at the start um, it can be difficult um, like I, I remember my own experience of studying I studied myself at SOAS more than 30 years ago um, and you know I was somebody when I was uh, when I was you know when I was doing uh, GCSEs and A-levels um, I was really really bad at art so I didn't really have a visual memory uh, I wasn't very good at remembering kind of shapes and, and forms um, so um, you know, for me, trying to learn how to write um, kanji, trying to learn how to write Chinese characters, uh, was 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 very was very difficult at the start. You know, I'd sit down and I'd write out a really simple character, you know, 50, 60 times before I went to bed, and I think, okay, I've got this one. Like it's in my brain. I know how to do this. I don't have to look at the example anymore. I can just write it. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I'd wake up the next morning and I could write it, and that was great. So it was in my brain. Um, but then sometimes I would wake up and I couldn't like the, it just it hadn't it hadn't stuck. Um, so I had to develop that kind of visual memory. I had basically had to rewire my brain, you know, you know to, to, to remember, you know, those those Chinese characters. And some of them can be you, know, you can have 20 different elements, or 25 different elements in a single character. So they're quite different, different to you know, alphabetical letters. You probably remember learning the alphabet, you know, in one or two days at school and I guess you know some of you maybe got B's and D's mixed up for a few more days but it was really quite a simple process but learning Chinese characters is is much more difficult so um, when I say I want you to have kind of passion or enthusiasm or kind of show that to me um, is really around that because when you're studying these difficult languages um, it's always a kind of like an up and down process and some days it will feel easy um, you'll be able to memorize vocabulary easy. You'll be able, able to, to, remem uh, to memorize uh, Chinese characters without very much difficulty. You'll look at things, you'll be able to read it, and you'll feel great. It, it will be very kind of affirming. Um, but then you will also have other days where, you know, maybe because of your mood or maybe because of your health or maybe because of the weather or who knows, something that's going on in your life, you'll have days where it just feels really, really difficult. Um, you can't remember your characters, vocabulary isn't sticking, you feel like you can't speak in a conversation class. Um, and it can be, it, you know, those days will feel depressing and dispiriting. And you'll start asking yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this to myself? It's so difficult. I can't believe I chose to do this. And at those moments, you want to have an answer. You know, you want to have something in your heart that says to you, okay, I'm doing this because you know, I want to, you know, I want to live in China, I want to go off to Japan, there's this thing I want to do. 
Um, so that, that passion or enthusiasm, that genuine interest uh, is the thing that's going to kind of pull you through those, um, those moments. I kind of feel like I'm persuading everybody not to study our languages now. Um, but yeah, so in terms of quality, th those are the things I look for. So, you know, can you handle the, you know, the academic side of it? Can you handle the language side of it? And do you have that, you know, that passionate, that, that kind of enthusiastic desire to, uh, to learn the language and to learn about the culture um, that's going to kind of carry you through uh, those, um, those, those, those moments. Um, Nico, you've got a question about um, best languages for, for, you know, for, for job hunting. Um, I'd say, you know, if, if you're interested in, in East Asia, uh, you know, we still have a kind of a, you know, a situation where there are not that very many people in the world um, who speak you know, Japanese, Chinese, or, or, or Korean. Um, so, you know, there, there are still kind of jobs which are open to people who, who are able to speak those, uh, those languages. Um, China, of course, is a, is a much bigger uh, job market than either Korea or, or Japan. Uh, but on the Chinese side, you do actually have a lot of people who live abroad. You have kind of you know, Chinese people who have grown up in Europe, who've grown up in the States, who've grown up in the UK, um, who speak in fluent English, but also speak fluent Chinese. Um, so yeah, that, there's, there's, it's, it's quite difficult to say which of those is, is best. So I'd say, you know, don't just look at kind of opportunities, because there are opportunities everywhere, uh, but look at what, what interests you the most, of where you could imagine living uh, and, uh, and, and working. Um, Ali, you've asked about, uh, I guess it's about the, the year abroad. So yeah, on the year abroad, the third year on BA Japanese, Chinese, and Korean, um, you go to a university in Japan. Uh, we have 20 odd different partners there. Um, so you can, you can kind of choose where you would like to go. Um, in China, we have, well, we have a university in Beijing. We have a university, another partner in Taiwan. Uh, so you can choose whether to go to, to mainland China or to go to Taiwan. Uh, in Korea, uh, we also have uh, at the moment six or seven um, different. Um, we have six or seven different um, partners that we can we can send you to in, in Korea. Uh, so yeah, so over on that year abroad, you will continue learning uh, Japanese language or Chinese language or Korean language, uh, plus some other stuff. You know, something about society or politics or history. Uh, those universities offer those kind of modules. Uh, as well. Um, so yeah, you, you, you continue to study the language on the, on the year abroad. Um, Alicia, uh, yeah, we've got, we've, got some, we've got some great modules on Japanese literature if you're interested uh, in that. Uh, we have an amazing teacher called uh, Dr. Filippo Cervelli, uh, and he teaches uh, contemporary Japanese literature. Uh, he's got a fourth year module where he, he teaches that. He also teaches some other things uh, as well. Um, Let's see, Jenny. Um, yeah, so the, the year abroad on those degrees, yeah, if you're studying Korean, you have to go to Korea. If you're studying Japanese, you have to go to, to Japan. Um, if you're interested, though, in maybe getting a little bit more language experience, I would say universities have holidays. Um, so predicting the summer holiday, uh, you're going to have a couple of months there where, you know, if you're studying Japanese at a Japanese university over the summer holiday, there's nothing to stop you going to Korea and taking a short course in Korean while you're living in Seoul or Busan or somewhere like that. Um, you know, or you could go and live in Shanghai for you know, a couple of weeks uh, and take a course there. So like formally, the university we will send you to is in the country of the language that is in the title of your degree. Um, but yeah, if you want to go and take a short course in one of the university holidays in Shanghai or Beijing or Seoul, then yeah, knock yourself up. We, 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 think, that's a, we think that's a great idea. Um, and actually by doing that, you know, if you've taken some beginners um, Korean um, in your second year, you could then maybe skip a level. You know, if you take like a short course in Korea in the summer, you could come back instead of going into Korean two, you could go into Korean three. Uh, so yeah, if, if you want to kind of gain experience with both languages, that's definitely something that you can, you can do. And also, of course, if you're in Japan, there are Korean language courses you can attend there um, as well. Um, uh, Ella, okay, you've, you've got a question about our partners in, in Korea. Uh, we currently have, uh, let's see, so we've got Korea University, we've got Sogang University, we've got Yonsei, uh, Hanyang, um, 
Sung Kyung, Sung Kyung Kwang, you can tell I don't speak Korean, um, and Suk Myung, uh, Women's University. Um, so those, those are the partners that we currently have in Korea. We're, we're looking to expand those, maybe we'll, we'll add a couple more, but at the moment it's those one, two, three, six isn't it six universities um and alicia yeah penny do you want to come in on that one oh okay i was typing my answer but i'll just say it so um when i graduated i felt pretty fluent like i can read newspapers i can read books i can talk to you i can ramble on and on but I would say it comes to like specialist topics like if you tell me to talk about this one specific thing that happened on this specific date and I don't have any background knowledge of it I'm gonna be a little bit confused and obviously there are some words which you never think that you would have to learn in another language and one day it just suddenly pops up and you have to grab your like dictionary on your phone and quickly type it in but uh, so I would say you're pretty fluent, but there's always opportunity to learn more. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Penny. I mean, you've got to you've got to understand, of course, that you know you're coming in. Penny started not knowing any Japanese, as as she said, and so four years. You will have been studying the language for for four years. So your vocabulary is always going to be less compared to you know, if you think about like a university student. They will have been you know in Japan hearing Japanese for 20 years um, so you know compared you know we have four years so we can we can we can teach you a lot but you're never going to have we can get you to a level where you can function but vocabulary is something you're you're, you're you, you pay you play catch up uh, with um, we're just coming very very near the end of the session so I'll just answer um, uh, Samuel's question really really quickly uh, and then we have to stop but if you have additional questions you can send them to me uh, ac50 at so I start uh, UK. Uh, Samuel, we have about 20 odd partners uh, in Japan. Uh, there's a big list of them uh, on the website. It's under the teaching and learning tab for, for BA Japanese. Um, but we've got maybe six or seven partners in Tokyo, a couple in Nagoya, three in Kyoto, three in Osaka, a couple in Kobe, uh, Kyushu, and also Hokkaido um, as well. Um, so we have, we have partners all over the place. Some of them only take two or three students um, each year. Some take some take a little bit, a little bit more. Um, but yeah, th there's a there's a competitive process to decide where you will where you will go. Um, in China, uh, we have uh, in Beijing we have BNU, Beijing Normal University, and in Taiwan we have uh, N, uh, NTNU, so the National Taiwan Normal uh, University are our partners. Um, Okay, uh, I think we have to, to wrap things uh, up there. Um, but thank you all for, for attending. Thank you for all of the questions and all of the uh, enthusiasm. Um, and I hope that we see some applications um, from you. Um, and thank you to Penny as well for, uh, for, for being here and giving the students perspective on, uh, on the degree as well. Uh, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>